Now let's work a little bit with that. So look, I have, let's consider that I have traction vectors. For instance, T1, I recall that T1 is now the traction vectors at point P, let's now change the name of the point. Instead of O, of o let's call it P, right? It's the same. So T1 is the traction vector at point P on a plane whose normal is U1, okay? Of course, this T1, this is a vector, that will have, it's a vector, we have three components. One component over E1, one component over E2, over e two and a component over E3. So, I can say that T1 has, is equal, can be expressed as the component of vector I, Ti, at point P, is the component of the com vector I, J times Ej. And this component, at the, of vector i uh, uh, over the plane of the, 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 the basis ij, let's call it sigma ij. So from t, I find three components, t11, which is that, which I'll call sigma11, t12, which is that component, which is called sigma12, and t13, the th third component, which is called sigma13, okay? The same, which are those, okay, sigma 1, 1, then can be comp set as understood as a vector in the direction, sigma 1, dot 2, a vector in the direction, not, not defining a vector in the direction, and sigma 1, 3 can be understood as the intensity of a vector in the direction, and the sum of these two vectors is T1, okay? So that's what is the case here. Of course, I could do the same for T2, T3. So finally, this equation, the question that we got before says that the vector t, the, the traction vector at point p in the direction n, is ti times ni. That's what we got as a final conclusion here. And now I do the same equation in components. So how is the component j of this vector? Is tij, but tij has been defined as sigma ij. So sigma ij times ni. So I can say that Tj at point P in the direction N, that is the component in the direction J of the traction vector at point P in the direction N, can be obtained as Ni times sigma Ij, the sum of these three components, or uh, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, times Nj, okay? By the way, this now, what about if I define a second order tensor? whose components, sigma ij, are precisely those are. What is that? I define that? Okay? So that is what Cauchy is defined as the stress tensor. Stress tensor, then, is something which is defined at point P. Look, it's defined at point P, but it doesn't depend on any normal because it's defined on the basis of this sigma ij, which are components of the traction vector on the Cartesian planes. So they are independent of the normal. The normal doesn't appear here. Look, the normal doesn't appear here. The normal appears in that equation, but doesn't appear here. So this point, and that's very important, the stress tensor is an entity that depends always only on the point. It doesn't depend on the normals. So that is a tensorial magnitude. And these sigma ij are the, then the components of this tensor on this system of coordinates. Of course, if I change the system of coordinates, those components could vary. But the tensor is a physical entity which depends only on the point. On the point. And this is the stress tensor, the Cauchy's stress tensor. A physical entity that depends on the point that has, of course, a second order tensor uh, components in every coordinate basis, which can change when they change coordinate basis, but that fulfills that equation. Look, this equation is that one. The traction vector at a point P on the certain normal N can be obtained by multiplying the dot product of the normal n times this second order, only point dependent vector, the Cauchy stress tensor. Look, 
Of course, the detection vector depends on P and N. That's what the first lemma of Cauchy said. But it depends on N through this N here, of course, but depends on P only on this sigma. Sigma doesn't depend on P. If I change the plane that I'm going to consider here, sigma is always the same. I just change that. But sigma, the stress tensor, is a physical entity, entity only depending of points, not dependent on orientations. Okay? And this is the fundamental equation that gives many things. Okay. For instance, what does it say? Let's consider this equation now in uh, matrix form. It says that the three components of the traction vector at point P, which is T1, T2, T3, okay, following a certain direction of N, which is N1, N2, N3, so the traction vector, that traction vector at this limit here, that traction vector point O at point P, eh, following the directions uh, N, can be obtained as the product of a tensor that can be transposed, a tensor whose components, the components of this tensor, are precisely the traction vectors on the three coordinate planes of the point. One is the traction vector on this area, okay? The second is the traction vector on this surface, on direction E2, and the third is the traction vector on this surface, the surface whose outward normal is E3. Look, the rows, the rows of this tensor in this system of coordinates are precisely these three components. So, sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3 were the three components of traction vector 1 on x1, on x2, and x3. Okay? So, this, the physical meaning of these three and figures here stand for the three components of this vector. The three components of this row here stand for the three components on this, of this, of this attraction, traction vector of point P on direction E2, and the three components of this the here, the third row, stand for the three components of this vector. Of course, that if I change the system of coordinates, of course, I would change these three planes. And these components will change, okay? But the stress tensor as a physical entity is when I say the vector is that, the vector is that, and th it has components on a certain basis. If I change the basis, the vector is the same, but the components change, right? Here is the concept. The stress tensor, the stress tensor depends only the, of the point as a physical tensorial entity. Of course, its uh, components depend on the chosen system of coordinates, but is a physical entity which only depends on the point. Okay? The traction at this point, following a certain direction, uh, if I know the stress tensor at this point, I have just to multiply by the tensor, that product, and I will obtain the traction. The traction on the same point on another normal, oh yeah, I don't change that. Change that, we do the, the operations, and I obtain the component of the traction. Okay? And by the way, the second Cauchy postulate is also true. What happens in this equation when I change the normal? So what is the traction at point P when instead of N, I take minus N? Well, in that equation, since the sigma doesn't depend on the normal, Sigma will be the same, and will turn on into minus n, and the tractions will change sign. Okay? Which wouldn't be true if P would depend on n. Okay? You follow that the, the relevance of P or of <coughs> sigma depend, not depending on n. Then, if what was, it was the case, then this uh, condition, uh, equation wouldn't be true. Okay, and the action and reaction principle wouldn't, wouldn't act. <coughs> As I told you, this is the construction of the, in, given a certain system of coordinates, if I know the tractions in the three uh, Cartesian planes, acting on the three Cartesian planes, on the positive normals E1, E2, E3, 
putting them into the three rows, I obtain the components of the stresses in this plane. 